you love the kit? I mean, when I was a kid and somebody gave me a plain old toy, that wasn't nearly as cool as if I got a kit. The plain old toy just did one thing, and that could get really boring really fast. But with a kit, I could customize. I could build it just the way I wanted. I could tweak it around and experiment until I got something really awesome. So when I get an IP block to use in my design, and it's just plain old black box RTL, well, it's kind of like when I got that basic toy. What I really need is IP blocks that allow me to tweak and tune to fit to my particular application needs. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. High-level synthesis technology has the potential to give us IP blocks that we can radically customize to meet our needs. It should bring that kit aspect to IP-based design. My guest today is David Persley from Cadence Design Systems, and we're going to look at how Cadence is enabling a whole new era of IP customization with their new Stratus high-level synthesis capability. Before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find out more information about Stratus high-level synthesis from Cadence Design Systems. Hi, Dave. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hey, thanks, Amelia. Thanks for having me. It's nice to be here. So HLS is one of those technologies that took a long time for widespread adoption, but it's really getting traction these days. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely it is. So a lot of people are surprised to know that it's actually 15 of the top 20 semiconductor companies are using HLS today. Wow. Yeah, they're using it on large designs, up to 30 million gates, sometimes a good bit more than that. And they're getting productivity improvements and verification improvements, which is normally expected. But they're also finding that they can get better quality results. And the IP that they create with HLS is more flexible and more valuable to them because of that. So what kind of applications is HLS best suited for? So traditionally, it's been applied to image processing, wireless applications, DSP type applications. But over the years, what we found is that it's actually applicable across the entire SOC. So things including controllers, communications devices, networking, HLS has been applied to all of this. So in fact, there are many products you can buy today where all the silicon inside was actually built with HLS. Including, apparently, pachinko machines. Pachinko machines, <laughs> indeed. Have you been to Japan, Amelia? No. <laughs> it's quite an experience. <laughs> I will have to check out a pachinko machine. Okay, so my audience may not know the nuts and bolts of HLS, so give us a refresher. So that's a really common question, so let's start there. So what it's basically doing is it's taking a very abstract description in C, C++, or System C, and then adding all the detail you need to make RTL. So it's adding the timing, the registers, the muxes, everything you need to actually make highly optimized RTL. Okay, so Dave, what are the real benefits of HLS? So the main benefit of HLS is productivity, and this is the one that everyone thinks about. And if you really look at it, what's bringing the productivity benefit is actually working at a higher level of abstraction. Hmm, okay. So when you're designing RTL, as you know, you're worried about your functionality, you're worried about your architecture, you're worried about your performance, but you're also worried about a lot of implementation details. How many registers? What does my finite state machine look like? Will my RTL pass lint checking? All of those things are mechanical. Right. They're not actually design tasks. So what HLS allows, by working at a higher level of abstraction, is you to focus on the design tasks, not the implementation tasks. Ah, uh, okay. And when you use this technology, you generally get about a 5x productivity improvement the first time, and then you can get even higher productivity improvements by reusing that IP. Ah, okay. So what else does this higher level of abstraction buy me? One of the other things it buys you is improvements in your verification flow. Okay. Everyone knows the benefits of TLM and especially verification at the transaction level. Yeah. What high-level synthesis gives is that you can work at that abstraction level, you can do your verification at that abstraction level, but then you automatically generate the hardware from that. So the verification used at the high level is directly applicable to your RTL implementation because it was directly created from that high level description through high level synthesis. All right, so 
in the old days, I always heard that you trade off quality of results for this productivity boost. Is that still true? Not at all. We've been working on high-level synthesis for over 15 years. Yeah. And as it turns out, high-level synthesis will never replace an existing flow if it's giving you poor quality of results. Okay. But it's one thing for me to say that it's improving quality results, and it's another to explain why. Okay. What actually happens is when you're designing RTL by hand, you're able to create one implementation, and that's what you're stuck with. Generally, it will give you good QOR because you put a lot of forethought into it, but it's not always necessarily the best implementation. So with high-level synthesis, you start from that abstract description, and you're able to create multiple RTL implementations and pick the implementation that best meets your power, performance, area constraints. Some of those transformations are done automatically through the high-level synthesis tool, and then others are assisted through the high-level synthesis tool. In fact, you can even do things like change your algorithm to change the functionality or try out different performance optimizations. Cool, okay. So what else does creating multiple RTLs mean? So this really gets to the crux of the value of high-level synthesis. Okay. By being able to create multiple RTLs, it means that your behavioral IP is much more reusable. It's able to be retargeted for multiple devices. You could have a high performance IP and then also a low power IP. And this is all a matter of just changing some directive files, some tickle scripts to target the tool in one way or another. Furthermore, you can even change the functionality. So you can make a change to your algorithm and just regenerate the RTL, something that there's no way to do when trying to reuse RTL IP. So Dave, this does sound like an interesting tool. Well, it is an interesting tool, but it's actually a lot more than that. Okay. Beyond just the high-level synthesis tool itself, there's also a design environment around it. So this allows you to specify your system C, your C, your C++, debug it, look at it, automate the flow around it. We also have IP that you can directly synthesize. And there's also a knowledge base. Over the past 15 years, we have hundreds of articles. We have tips, tricks, app notes, best practices on how to actually best apply high-level synthesis to your production flow. Very cool. So Dave, I've never quite understood how HLS deals with the real-world concessions, you know, like ECO and how can you help me with that? So ECO is actually a good example. With high-level synthesis, you have this abstract C++ description and it's generated RTL from there. So if you now have a behavioral change, you need to change that system C, you can go ahead and do that and generate new RTL in an incremental mode that will minimize the number of changes in the RTL. Okay. And then by automating with the rest of the flow, so for example, with the conformal ECO designer, you can generate automatically a netless patch or even a polygon patch for your ECO. Excellent. So in RTL land, I have a lot of blocks that I can reuse that help me with the basic things. But is there anything like that in the HLS universe? Absolutely. Some of the same types of blocks, things like interfaces and IO interfaces, but also things like data types, fixed point data types, floating point data types, even things as complex as line buffers. These are all things that we provide with Stratus in order to make your life easier. All of these things that I mentioned, floating point types, fixed point types, line buffers. These are implementation details that are required to best implement your algorithm, but they're mm. not the actual design work. It's right. not the actual functionality. They're just infrastructure. All right. So when we put this all together, what does it really look like? So as you see here, Amelia, this is a picture of Stratus HLS with all the bells and whistles around it. Okay. So you have your system C, C, C++ coming in the top, going through the high-level synthesis tool, which, by the way, has logic synthesis inside. It's looking at your technology library. It's looking at your constraints. And it's actually building all the data path components it needs to implement in RTL that system C, C, or C++ description. OK. You also have your interface IP, your floating point IP, your data types, as we talked about. And you're able to analyze this inside the IDE and then also map the results in your RTL back to your original system C description. Awesome. Okay. So Dave, we've covered quite a bit about HLS today. Can you give me a quick rundown of your main points? Sure, absolutely. The four big things to remember about HLS. So it gives you a big productivity increase, it improves your verification, and improves your quality results. But by far, the biggest value of high-level synthesis is that it gives you more valuable, more reusable IP. Excellent.
Well, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me today, Dave. All right. Thanks a lot, Amelia. It was great talking to you. Before we go, don't forget to click that link. There you can find out more information about Cadence Design Systems' Stratus High-Level Synthesis. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, check out EE Journal's YouTube channel, keyword EE Journal, or the on-demand section of eejournal.com.